not every student may be the best in math or the best in reading. That might be one of the places that they struggle, but in music class it's pretty easy to achieve success because you have a voice, you can sing. You have just natural human things that we do is musical, so they can come into my classroom and play an instrument and sing and just feel that feeling of, wow, I, I can do this, and it's a good feeling for them. I fell in love with Pittsburgh because I feel it's kind of like the Goldilocks of places. It's not too big, not too small, it's just right. And it's just a great little community that I feel it's really important to connect with the community, and especially if my students are out and about, I want them to see um, me, and I want, to see, I want them to see that I care. With the symphony, I think it's really neat that my music students see that I am a musician. I, um, not, I don't just teach, I actually perform on an instrument. I think it's really special to bring in community members to my classroom because it gives a whole new level to music. Kids can see beyond just the classroom and having the Pitt State Jazz musicians come in to play at our program was super special because they got to see what we do in a classroom on a different level. One of the things I really like to do is to make memories for my students, so I think it's really special to have the jazz band play at that program so that they could remember that. When people ask me what my philosophy is, and philosophy is as a music educator, I tell them I try to make joy every day. I try to get students to come in, get them organized, and share music with them, and get them to feel that joy that I first fell in love with when I was their age in music class. One of the things I always tell my students that I want them to do is to grow up to be good, kind people. I try to do that through modeling kindness, um, try to encourage them to be kind, one, kind to one another. Um, our first rule in music class is be respectful. People have different tastes in music, but we can still be respectful and learn to appreciate everyone for their different likes or dislikes. Now hopefully it's coming across them and I'm making a good impression that they can grow up to be good kind people. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Um, it was sixth grade. Um, I grew up in Rock Springs, Wyoming, and I had an amazing sixth grade teacher, um, Miss Pauline Meyer. And I knew I wanted to be like her. Um, the class was fun, it was engaging, and we really felt like we were one of her kids. And I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. The support we have in Frontenac is unlike anywhere else. Um, if we, as teachers, need something, the community, parents step in, no questions asked, and, and get that for us. I always try to make my classroom like a, I want it to be a family, and I'm really upfront with the kids. I'll spend more awake hours with them than I will with my wife and my own kids. So we're a family in here, and some days are gonna be incredible, and some days are gonna be bad. Our classroom can be a little bit noisy, can be a little bit chaotic, but that's how family life is sometimes. Um, but we work through that and I really try to build relationships. That's my number one piece of advice for any like first year teacher, any teacher, is if you focus on the relationships first, the learning will come later. Kansas Ed Chat was actually started by um, some teachers four years ago. I picked it up and um, have been running it and I've got um, a, another person, a teacher out in Nest City, Kansas. We run it together. Um, and it's really grown and just um, really became a community of connected educators, not only in Kansas, but all over the world. Yeah, one of the things I always get from EdChat is there's, I'm really inspired about all the great things that are happening in education in our state. We do have a weekly chat every Monday, but people use that hashtag um, to share what's going on in their classrooms. Being a part of the um, Commissioner's Teacher Advisory Council, it's a, it was a, it's a great opportunity to work with some of the most amazing educators throughout the state. The best part is um, Dr. Randy Watson, our commissioner, really values teacher voice. He wants our input and he wants to know what's going on in our classrooms. And to be able to go up there and share some things that are going on in Southeast Kansas has been just, it's been great. When you do something, go all in on it. And that's the way I've always been with everything. Um, is when I'm into something, I'm, I'm all the way into it. So when we go do lessons in the classroom, we make sure that we're doing 
the best thing that's going to be for the kids. And it may take some extra time and effort and extra planning, but when you see the results and you see the kids uh, collaborating, being creative thinkers, uh, using their creativity, it makes it all worth it in the end. I decided to become a teacher after my sophomore year of college. I showed quarter horses for about eight to 10 years. And in the summers, I would give 4-H clinics to kids. And I really knew that I wanted to work with kids because I really enjoyed that. Then I kind of had to think about, okay, what were my strengths? And I loved my English classes in high school. I took English, I took journalism, I took theater. I wanted to do something that I had that passion for. And I changed my major to English education. Um, my first year here, I had five preps and I was, I was directing the junior play, so it was a little overwhelming. Mary Jane's retiring this year, and I'm gonna miss her greatly because she still is my mentor. So I went to her and asked for her help and guidance so I could become the best teacher that I possibly could. And we had many conversations about lesson plans and discipline and philosophy, and, and she instilled to me that all kids could learn and that you need to be fair and, and you need to treat them with respect because they're people too. They have good days, they have bad days, and it's my job as a teacher to make sure I can pull those strengths out in my class and make sure that I can, I can help them become as successful as possible. Every lesson that I give, I sit back afterwards and I, and I go out with my department. We reevaluate what worked, what didn't work, what do I need to change, what do I need to update. You have to stay up to date. The kids are gonna be up to date on the newest technology. You have to use those things. You have to put in variety. We just our finishing of Mice and Men. In the beginning, I would have given pre-notes on, on Mice and Men and what was going on. Now I put up four topics up on the board and I say, okay, let's go look at factors that play a role in, in of Mice and Men. And they go and search and find things that they're interested in. Because I think if you find something that the kids are interested in, I think that they'll go with it from there. You see a whole different aspect of the kids when you're involved with them outside of the classroom. Maybe there's a kid that, that doesn't have strengths in English class, but man, they're outgoing or they have leadership skills. When we're decorating for prom or we're planning prom, there are kids that step up and do things for you that you wouldn't have never ever realized. And you, you just get to see them as, as a real person rather than just as a student. Servant leadership to me is, is putting the kids um, before myself. It's not about me, it's about them. Um, they need to leave my class um, prepared for the next level and I need them to feel comfortable there and I think a servant leader does those things.